Telling her mom about how bad life is. How many of you know that all of us go through difficult times in life? Come on, Come on. somebody. She goes to her mother and she tells her mom how difficult her life is and how things were so hard for her. She did not know how she was going to make it and she wanted to give up. Does anybody here ever felt like you wanted to give up? Wanted to give up? She did not know how she was going to make it and she wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and she was tired of struggling. Let the church say amen. Amen. It seemed as though as one problem was being solved, another problem was arising. Her mother took her to the kitchen and her mom says, look, it, I'm going to fill up three pots with water. In the first pot, she put in some carrots. In the second pot, she put in some eggs. In the last pot, she put in some ground coffee beans. Carrots, eggs, coffee beans. Watch this. So she let them sit on the pot, on the stove and they were boiling. And the mom didn't say a word. She just let the pots boil. About 20 minutes had gone by and she goes and she turns off the burners. She fished the carrots out and placed them in a bowl. She pulled out the eggs and placed them in a bowl. And then she ladled out what had become coffee and put that in a bowl. Turning to her daughter, she says, okay, baby girl, I know life is difficult, but tell me what you see. She says, I see carrots, I see eggs, and I see coffee. What's the point, mom? She brought her closer and she says, okay, now I want you to feel those carrots. She did feel the carrots and she noticed that the carrots were soft. She then asked her to take an egg and break it. And after pulling off the shell, she observed that the hard boiled egg had come to pass. And then finally she asked her to sip the coffee. The daughter smiled as she tasted the rich aroma of the coffee. Then the daughter asked her, what's the point mom? Her mother explained that each one of these items, the carrots, the eggs, and the coffee, had faced the same adversity, the boiling water. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. The Amen. carrot, listen to this, the carrot went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior. But after being through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however, because after they were subjected to the boiling water, they had actually changed the water. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now, I want, she goes to her daughter. She says, okay, baby girl. She says, I know you got some hard times in your life, but which one of these are you going to be? Which one of these are you going to be? When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot? Are you an egg? Or are you a coffee bean? Think of this. Which one am I? Am I the carrot, which seems strong, but with pain and adversity, do I wilt and become soft and lose my strength? Am I, am I the egg that starts with a malleable heart, but changes with the heat? Did I have a fluid spirit, but after death, a break, after a death, after a breakup, after a financial hardship or some other trial, have I become hardened and stiff in my soul and my spirit? Does my shell look the same on the outside, but on the inside I'm bitter and tough with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or am I like the coffee bean? The bean actually changes the hot water. The very circumstance that brings the pain. When the water gets it hot, it releases the fragrance and the flavor. If you are like the bean, when things are at their worst, you get better and change the situation around you. Let the church say amen. amen. Somebody amen. come on! Yeah. 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 When the yeah. hours... I'm big. Let me ask you, when the hours are the darkest, when the hours are the darkest and the trials are the greatest, do you elevate to another level? How do you handle adversity? Are you the egg? Are you the carrot? Or are you the coffee bean? Come on, church. Say amen. amen. To that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. If 
you got a Bible this morning, turn with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Let's get in the Bible this morning. Hallelujah. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. Someone will bring you a Bible. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Today I want to talk to you about your network of friends. How many of you guys remember a song from the, I, I think it was from the Beatles that says, I get by with a little help. Yeah. From I my get friend. High. I get Johnny, high with a little. Johnny, you remember that song? Yeah. I get high with a little yeah. help from my friends. Come on, somebody. Yeah, watch this, watch this. All of us have a network of friends in our life. All of us have a network of friends in our life. Do you realize, Jonathan Ellis, do you realize? that everything we do, we have to have someone help us do. If we get drunk, it's our network of friends that help us get drunk. If we get high, it's the network of friends that help us get high. Let me just give you an example, listen to this. When I sold Lynn's clothing, I was a salesman. I was fishing for people that were gonna be customers. When I was a dope dealer, come on somebody, I was fishing for dope fiends that I could gain as customers. Amen. Come on, somebody. If you go Amen. to the if you go to the police station, there's a network of people there who help you get arrested. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you go to the hospital, there's a network of people there who help you get well. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you go to anywhere, there's a network of people who bring you in and help you get the services they provide. Come on. So all of us belong to a network of people, whether it's people who help us stay stuck or people who help us advance in our life. You are here in church today with a network of people who love you, with a network of people who pray for you, with a network of people who want to see you healed, with a network of people who want to see you delivered. Let the church say amen. 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 But what happens, hallelujah. Okay, so, but what happens when we get caught up in the wrong network? With people who are helping us stay stuck. Most people, listen, all of us guys know this, that when we were young kids, our dads used to tell us, watch out who your friends are. Jonathan Ellis, our dads used to tell us, watch out who your friends are. My dad used to say this to me, I could tell, about, I could tell everything I need to know about a man by looking at his friends. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. The friends are the network. The friends are the network that help you do stuff good or help you do stuff bad. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Amen. And as we talk about this, listen, as we talk about this, I want you to have some self-examination, some spiritual introspection. Look at the people that you hang around. Look at the, the people who you are around you all the time because they are the people who are your network. They're the people who help you get the food you need. They're the people who help you get the drink you need. They're the people who help you stay stuck in the situation that you're in. Let the church say amen. 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 But all of us, listen, all of us have to realize that Jesus came to change our network. Oh, Jesus came to change our network. If you examine the people that you hang out with, if you examine the people that you're around all the time, Jesus says, wait a minute. I want to bring you into the company of believers. I want to bring you into the kingdom of heaven. I want you and your brothers to be united together. Come on, somebody. He's talking about a network of believers, a network of righteousness, a network of possibility, a network of good things for your life. Let the church say amen. 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 Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the challenge that we face. Do you realize that when you come here to church, you are in a network of good? People who want to pray for you, people who want to provide for you, people who want to feed you, people who want to give you the gospel, people who want to see you healed, people who want to see your life turn around, people who want to see good things for you. Let the church say amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are in the right place at the right time. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Hey, neighbor. Hey, neighbor. You are in the right place at the right time with the right network of people. Now look at the neighbor on the other side and say neighbor. Hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. You are in the right place. You're in the right place. At the right time. At the right time. With the right network of people. With the right network of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, God is a God of change. God is a God of miracles. God is a God of deliverance. God is a God of power. God is a God of goodness. And God has something good for you today. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, I love this. I love this. Because do you remember there was a guy in the Bible, his name was Job. Yeah. yeah. And Job went through some terrible things in his life. He lost his family. That was his network for family. He lost his, uh, his, his, all his cattle and his sheep and everything got robbed in one day, right? So he lost his network for money. Then he lost his family all in one day. Remember his network for family? Yeah. Amen. And this is what happened during the rest. This all happens in the first couple chapters. But the other 40 chapters are about how he deals with his network of friends. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, this is powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, his friends kept telling him, well, you must have done something wrong. Why would God let this happen to you if you didn't do anything wrong? You've got to be in sin. Come on. You've got to be doing something wrong. God doesn't bring judgment like this on people for no reason. And so his network of friends were telling him that he must have some kind of unconfessed sin. Amen. Oh, but the Bible says that Job prayed for his friends. Amen. And he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, he says this. He says, I had heard about you, Lord. I had heard about your miracle work in power. I had heard about how powerful you are. I had heard about how good you are, God. I had heard about the miracles that you've done. I had heard about all these things. But now, since I've heard about you, all, all I know is now I heard it, or then I heard about you, but now I see you. Now I see you. What does that mean? Watch this. That's a lecture, sir. Watch this. The lecture. Hold on, watch this. It says this. Is heavy yes, it says this. Heart. Watch this. Watch this. It says, I had heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Yeah. Many times we hear do, about do the things spirit. God does. Do Hold on. Many, many times we hear about the things God does. But then we see the miracles begin to happen in our life and the miracles begin to Amen. manifest in our life. Hallelujah. And we had heard about God. We had heard he was a financial blesser. We were heard that he was a physical healer. We heard that he turned situations around. We heard about those things. But when he starts doing it for you, come on somebody, then you see it for yourself. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So watch what's happening here. You're hearing today about the network that surrounds you. You're hearing today about that network that surrounds you when you're not here. And now you're in a network of people who love you where there's comfort, where there's peace, where there's goodness right here. And as you're in this network, let me just tell you, God is moving within this network. God is moving within this network. God is meeting your need within this network. God is changing your life within this network. God is doing miracles within this network. Let the church say amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, because you had heard about it before. But if you just stay plugged in here to the right network, you will begin to see God move. You will begin to experience the goodness of God. You will begin to feel the deliverance of God. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's powerful. Man, that's powerful. As we get into the story of Luke chapter 5, we catch Jesus standing on the Sea of Galilee, on the edge of the sea. And Jesus is fishing for men. Watch this. Jesus is standing on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he's preaching the word. And there's a crowd gathered around him, kind of similar to this, maybe a little bigger crowd, maybe a smaller crowd, who knows? But the crowd is pushing in on him. And as he's getting pushed closer to the water at the water's edge, come on somebody, the crowd is listening to the word of God being preached. When Jesus turns around, he notices that there's two uh, uh, boats parked behind him. So as he looks at the boats, there's Peter, Simon Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, they've been fishing all night and they haven't caught nothing. Come on, watch this, watch this. They are cleaning their nets. In other words, they're cleaning their network that produced no results. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on, somebody. I don't know about you. If you got a network okay, of people okay, around okay. you who are not producing any results, if you got people around you who are not helping you but hurting you, come on, somebody. If you got people around you that are producing no results with their life, so they can't help you produce any results in your life, 
Hallelujah. So these guys are cleaning their nets. They fished all night and they didn't catch nothing. So Jesus jumps in Simon Peter's boat and he says, Simon Peter, I've got something good for you. In other words, Jesus jumps in the boat with Simon and he says, your network is about to change. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Your, your network is about to change. Amen. Peter, I've got something for you, but hang on just a minute. Amen. Back up a little amen. from the shore. Amen. Because let me just tell you, sometimes the greatest miracles in your life will only happen when you get in the boat with Jesus. Yeah. Come on, somebody say amen, amen to that. Amen. So they push off a little from the shore amen. and Jesus is still preaching the word of God. Amen. Now watch what's happening here. Jesus is in the fishing boat with the fishermen. What is Jesus doing as he's preaching the gospel? He's fishing for men with the gospel of the word of God. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you realize, hallelujah, that if you're a Christian here today, you've called to be a fisher of men? And here's what happens with us. Listen, you can only do so much from the water's edge. Sometimes you got to get in the boat with Jesus so you can get your miracle. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 But we're not going to rely on a miracle. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. We got to serve him without the miracle. We're not going to rely on it. We got to serve him without the miracle. We got the Jesus. miracle by being born again. Ah, we got the miracle by being born again. Let the church say amen. Amen. When you know Woo. that you Hallelujah. know that you know that you know that you know. So watch this. Watch what happens. So Jesus is giving the word of God. He's fishing for men from the inside of the boat. He's got the fisherman, the expert with him right here. And so he says, okay, Peter, I'm done teaching the word of God. I'm done preaching the word of God. And I told you at the beginning, I got something good for you. Your network is about to change. Let's go to the deep water. Look at your neighbor and say deep water. Deep water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this now. Watch this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, watch Man's this. Wisdom. Watch this. Sometimes, how many of you, when you go to the beach, how many of you have been to the beach here? Okay, all right, watch this. How many of you know, realize that when you get into the water, when you go to the beach and you're just getting into the water, you get, you put your toes in and the water's cold. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. You put your toes in and the water's cold and you say, oh my God, this water's cold. And you can start to walk in slowly. You're trying to let the water adjust to you or adjust to the water. So you get into your ankles and that water's cold, man. You get into your, your, your shins and that water's cold. You get into your, uh, you get into your knees. You get into your knees, and man, you're, you don't even know if you want to get in anymore. Watch this. Then the little waves come and splash on you. Come on. Then the little waves come and splash on you. God forbid those waves come around your waist, because for you men, we come running out of there. Let the church say amen. Amen. But how many of you know, listen, how many of you know if you've been to the beach enough, you know that the best way to get in the water is to run and dive in. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. amen. You see, you run out there and you dive in because the minute you get your head in, the minute you get your body in, the yeah, minute yeah, you get yeah. all the way in, it's yeah. so much easier to acclimate to the water. So yeah, you might have to dive in the deep end. Whenever I go swimming in the swimming pool, I always dive in from the deep end. I dive straight in. Amen. Right? So no matter how cold it is, yep. I get used to the water much quicker. Jesus like says this. Like a band -aid. Jesus like says this. Peel, peel Jesus says, come on, Simon. Yeah, just rip the band-aid off. Simon, let's go to the deep water. Look at your neighbor and say, deep water. Deep, deep water. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, listen, sometimes your blessing is not in the kiddie pool. Sometimes your blessing is in the deep end of the pool. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to get all the way in with Jesus and get to the deep end of the pool. Amen. Hallelujah. Because not a lot of things happen in the shallow end. Hallelujah. Amen. You can only say so cold in the shallow end. Hallelujah. But when you get to the deep end, come on, somebody. When you get to deep waters with Jesus, Jesus is saying this. Look, I want to take you to the deep side of what I got for you. I want to go down deep with you. I want to be inside of you. I don't want to just be on your lips in the shallow part. I want to be in the deep side. Come on, church, say amen to that. Whoa, yeah. I don't want to 
want to be in the shallow end, just in your mouth. I want to be in the deep end, in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. Hallelujah. Woo, that's the deep end. Say this out loud. Say this out loud. Lord, fill me in the deep end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it one more time. Lord, Lord. Fill me, fill me in the deep end. The deep end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because let me ask you a question. How deep is the well of your heart? Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How deep is the well of your Amen. heart? How deep does your heart go? How deep do you feel things in your heart? How deep is your love for Jesus? How deep can you go in your heart? That's right. Woo, Jesus. It's easy to say, I love you, Lord. But when things have happened to your heart and you've got to trust God, then when you say, I love you, it's not just lip service. The Bible says this, these people honor me with their lips, but the deep waters of their heart are far from me. Oh, my God. No. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. These people honor me with the shallow end. Amen. Yes. Speak it, brother. But their deep end is not with me. Oh, my God. That's power. Hallelujah. These people honor me with their lips. Amen. But their heart is far from me, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Oh, we can't be that way, God. Listen, listen. Amen. Amen. This is why Peter, uh, Jesus takes Peter, Simon Peter, out to the deep end. He says, come on. I want to get to the deep place of your heart. Watch this. Peter is not a follower of Jesus at this time. So he says this. He says, Master, watch this. Listen to the word. Listen to the word. He says, Master, in other words, I respect you as a teacher. Master, man, I'm the professional fisherman, and you're the professional preacher, man, and I fished all night, and I didn't catch a darn thing, Lord. I didn't catch a darn thing, Master. I respect you as a teacher, and I call you Master. He says, watch this now. He says, but nevertheless, at your word, I will do what you say to do. He honored him with the shallow end and called him master. But then he took a step of faith and says, but because you say it, I will do it. Let the church say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. neighbor. Or neighbor. Amen. Just do what God says to do. Look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor! Hey, neighbor! Just do what God says to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. You okay, bro? Yeah. Okay, because when you do what God says to do, you will have what God says you can have. When Peter says, Master, we fished all night, we didn't catch nothing. How many of you realize that there's always a problem before there's a promotion? Come on! Ah, I am preaching! Woo! Jesus, hallelujah, watch this. There's always a problem before there's a promotion. Yep. Hallelujah! Easy, easy. You got him, you got him? Hey, hey, hey. Hey. I sit down with a little help from my friends. Hallelujah! Oh, church with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm going to hear the word of God with my friends. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say this out loud. Say this out loud. There's always a problem. There's always a problem. Before there's a promotion. Before there's a promotion. Yeah, yeah. Peter says, wait a minute, master. We fished all night. We didn't catch nothing. He says, that's my problem. But here's my step of faith. And he says, because you say so, because you're asking me, I will do it. So watch what happens. They go into the deep end. Oh, this is good. Hallelujah. They go into the deep end of the Sea of Galilee. Peter casts his net on the right side of the boat. Come on, somebody. How many of you know there's a wrong side and there's a right side? Yeah. That's Look right. At your, go. Come on, say it out loud. Say it out loud. There's a wrong side, there's a wrong side and there's a right side. side. 
Jesus, uh, Peter casts his net off the right side of the boat. And when he throws his net in, a miracle happens. Watch this. Do you realize that fishermen were dependent on their catch of fish for their income? They were dependent on the catch of fish for their livelihood. They were dependent on the catch of fish to sustain themselves. Come on, somebody. They were dependent on the catch of fish. Amen. That was what they brought to market. Come on, somebody. And when, and when Peter did it on his own, he didn't catch anything. But when he did it God's way, come on, somebody, look at yourself, look at your neighbor and say, do it God's way, neighbor, do it God's way. Watch this. When he followed the Lord's directions, when he followed the Lord at his word, he threw the net in on the right side. And the Bible says, amen, that he got such a big catch of fish, amen, that the nets began to break and the boat began to sink. Let the church say amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you realize that we are all fishermen here? Some of us are fishermen for alcohol. Some of us are fishermen for drugs. Some of us are fishing for prostitutes. Come on, somebody. Some of us are fishing for clients. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question. What are you fishing for today? Because I'll tell you today, I'm fishing for you. I'm fishing for you. Not because I want you, because God wants you. I'm fishing for you so you can be blessed, so you can be healed from COPD, so you can be healed for in your physical body, so you can be healed. I'm fishing for your blessing. Let the church say amen. amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want you to ask yourself a question. Who's in the boat with me? Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Who's in whose boat are you in? Whose boat are you in? Are you in the boat of self-effort? Amen. Are you in the boat of trying to do everything right. yourself? Right. Because as I said, some miracles will come until you get in the boat with Jesus. Let the church say amen. Amen. How many of you are ready for a turnaround today? How many of you are ready for God to do something in your life? Hallelujah. How many of you are you ready for a change in your life? Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that the catch of fish was so big The Bible says that the catch of fish was so big that Peter had to call his partners in the fishing business to come help him. And they loaded Peter's boat and they loaded their boat so full of fish that the nets were breaking and the boats were beginning to sink. So let me ask you a question, guys. Sometimes, let me say this like this. Sometimes, your only means of transportation is a leap of faith. Oh, Jesus. Listen to this, guys. Sometimes, your only means of transportation is a leap of faith. Sometimes, your only means of transportation is a leap of faith. Let me say it one more time. Sometimes your only means of transportation is a leap of faith. Peter said, Peter said this. Peter said this. I fished all night, Lord, and I didn't catch nothing doing it my way with my network. But now, Lord God, if you want to give me your network, I'll take a leap of faith and I'll do exactly what you said to do. I don't know if anyone here is ready for a boat sinking, net breaking miracle in your life, but God is good. Let the church say amen. Amen. Everybody stand right where you are. Stand up right where you are. Thank you, bro. We love you, man.
Hallelujah.